difference. Stand by for a moment. I want to bring in uh, Mark Mazzetti of the New York Times. He's a CNN national security analyst. Uh, Mark, uh, you, uh, you have some major new reporting just posted in the New York Times moments ago that the White House has been in direct touch with Justice Department officials about the Mueller report. Tell us about your, your latest information. Yeah, we're reporting that there have been numerous conversations in, in the last couple of weeks uh, between uh, Justice Department officials and some lawyers at the White House. These would be members of the White House Counsel's Office, not the President's personal lawyers. Um, it is uh, some discussions about some of this content of the Mueller report uh, and some of the conclusions that Mueller's team came, uh, came upon. Now, this uh, has led the White House team to be able to develop develop a little bit more of a refined strategy uh, for this rebuttal that they're planning to put out, we assume, not long after the Mueller report comes out. And, and you're also reporting that there's a sense of paranoia among some White House officials. Tell us about that. Yeah, as this becomes uh, closer to release, there is a concern, a paranoia uh, about um, about possible retaliation by the president. If there is a kind of roadmap uh, in the report about who said what, how damaging it was, uh, you know, who knows what the president might do, and um, and so that has created this concern. It's been there before, but I think the closer it comes to release, um, and perhaps the more the White House itself learns what's in the report, um, that has fueled this paranoia. And I just want to go back for a second as well to sort of add that um, this issue with the Justice Department talking to the White House um, is of a piece uh, with some of the kind of more controversial actions that, Pre uh, that Attorney General Barr has made in recent weeks and, and statements he's made, going back to the four-page letter, also adding to that the statement that he made last week during the congressional testimony, uh, sort of saying that there had been spying on the Trump campaign in 2016. So he's under a lot of scrutiny as well. Mark, what, what do you make of the uh, fact that it was President Trump uh, just a little while ago who announced that the Attorney General will be having a news conference tomorrow morning instead of the Justice Department would normally make an announcement like that? I mean, it's hard to know at this point how much to make of it. Certainly, you know, it suggests that there was a degree of coordination going on, uh, which isn't entirely uh, abnormal. Uh, and this is obviously a, 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 an unusual presidency. But it does show that uh, there is at least uh, an effort to have a coordinated, some degree of a coordinated message uh, tomorrow when the report comes out. What do you think about that, Laura? Uh, you know, Wolf, it strikes me, it, it's sort of unorthodox, but it's not surprising necessarily that they're having conversations about the rollout. I think we need to learn more, and I would not be surprised if the attorney general addresses this at the top of his remarks. And I think a lot of people were sort of curious about why he didn't just address it head on at his testimony last week. He had said previously that the White House was not going to do a privilege review of this report. Fine, fair enough. But when he was asked about whether the White House had been briefed on the report, he deferred on that. He said he didn't want to get into it. So part of what leads to all of this speculation and conflagration about White House and DOJ communications is the secrecy. And if everyone would just be up front with what's happening, mm -hmm. because there's nothing wrong with it, perhaps there wouldn't lead to all of this enormous uh, sort of combustion of curiosity all the time about all of their conversations. Yeah, and Pamela, you covered the White House for us, so what do you, what's your analysis? Yeah, I mean, as soon as I heard Bill Barr in the hearing last week, he was being very cagey on this issue, said he wasn't going to talk about discussions, even though in that letter previously he said that he wouldn't consult with the White House on executive privilege. I went straight to White House sources. Um, some didn't know, others were being cagey, and it did appear that if there was, was some back and forth, which again, as you said, Laura, this whole secrecy and not being forthcoming and transparent leads to, to you to this perception that there's something going on behind the scenes that may not be uh, buttoned up or could be nefarious, even though the White House and DOJ, there's nothing precluding them from talking, but it is more of a political issue. And you would think that they would have gotten out front of this and saying, hey, this is what we're doing. There's nothing to hide here because the Democrats have said all along they don't want the White House to have any part of this process um, because the concern would be that the White House would be trying to shield information potentially on an inv investigation that has to do with the president. And now we're learning from Mark's reporting in the New York Times that there has been this back and forth several conversations over a couple of weeks. And it just raises the question, why are we learning from, about this from the New York Times and not from the officials, not from Bill Barr or anyone from the White House? You know, and, and it's interesting, you know, Pamela, because 
the former FBI director, uh, James Comey, he was criticized for having a full-scale news conference uh, uh, as he was announcing no criminal charges were going to be launched against Hillary Clinton. Do Barr and Rosenstein, by having a news conference tomorrow, potentially risk that kind of criticism? They risk it. He, certainly, they're going to have to tread carefully tomorrow. Remember the letter that, that Rod Rosenstein wrote, that memo that was used in justifying firing James Comey, mentioned the fact that he held this press conference about Hillary Clinton, which violated DOJ protocol. You don't hold press conferences on um, declinations when you decide not to prosecute someone. As Laura pointed out, though, there are many other things that they can talk about tomorrow. Uh, the process, how they decided to redact what, um, his thinking, addressing this back and forth with the White House, but certainly a lot is at stake and he is going to have to be very careful. Everybody stick around uh, because we're following all the breaking news. I want to go to Capitol Hill right now where some members of Congress will be able to review a second version of the Mueller report with fewer redactions and the version that will be released publicly tomorrow morning. Uh, our senior congressional correspondent Manu Raju is working this part of the story for us. Manu, the Justice Department revealed this second version is coming. What more can you tell us about that? How is this likely to play with Democrats? Yeah, in that court filing, it says a limited number of members of Congress could review the less redacted version of the Mueller report after the redacted version becomes public, but it's not clear exactly who will be able to see that on Capitol Hill if it will only be limited to the so-called gang of eight, the people who are in charge of the intelligence committees, the leadership, or if it will be extended to more than that, perhaps the Judiciary Committee chairman and ranking members in the House in the Senate. But nevertheless, Democrats have demanded the full Mueller report, not a less redacted Mueller report. They've demanded the underlying information They've demanded the grand jury transcripts as well, and they have threatened to subpoena the Justice Department for all of that, and also suggested they've been willing to go to court to fight for all this information. So, Wolf, the revelation today that a less redacted report could be available to some members of Congress, unlikely to satisfy Democrats who are vowing to fight for every word of this report. The question is, will they get it, Wolf?